Welcome back to the Data Professor YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Chenin Nanta Senamad, and I'm an Associate Professor of Bioinformatics. On this YouTube channel, we cover about data science concepts and practical tutorials. So if you're into this kind of content, please consider subscribing. So in previous episodes, we were talking about how you can deploy your machine learning model in Python and R. And particularly, if you want to deploy your machine learning model in R language, you want to use the Shiny package. And so I'm happy to introduce to you a new series of videos that will be on this YouTube channel, which will be called Web Apps in R, where we will guide you how you can develop your web apps using R by means of the Shiny package. Before we begin, let's cover over the basics of what is a Shiny package. So Shiny is an R package that allows you to build an interactive web application. There are several extension packages that will allow you to extend the function of Shiny, including Shiny themes, Shiny Dashboard, Shiny JS, and several others. And once you develop your web app in Shiny, then you want to deploy it. So you have two options. You want to deploy it on your own server, for example, using a service like DigitalOcean or to a shinyapps.io. There are lots of example codes that can get you started, and this is available in the Shiny Gallery. So the links are in the slides. Okay, so what we will learn today, first of all, we will learn about the structure of a Shiny web application. And then we're gonna have a look at some of the examples of the Shiny web application. And finally, we will show you step-by-step -step how you can build your interactive web application. So let's have a look at the structure of a Shiny web application. So essentially, a Shiny web app comprises of three three components. So the first component is the user interface, which is housed within a file called ui.r. And the second is the server function, which will perform the processing of the data, which is housed in the file called server.r. And then the shiny app function will fuse the UI and server components together. So the UI is the front end that accepts the user input values. The server is the back end that processes these input values to finally produce output results that are displayed on the web. Website. Okay, so you see that input data will flow into the user interface, which is the website that you see, and then you will enter data into the text box, and then the data will be submitted to the server. The server processes the information, and then it will produce the result, and the result is displayed on the website. Okay, and then the user will see the results. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the shiny web applications. So let's go to this link. Okay, so this is a gallery available from Shiny, and you can see that there are a lot of examples. So there are the integration of maps right inside Shiny application, and also interactive scatter plots. You can also embed Google Charts as well. You could perform k-means clustering. You could create some bar charts using available data set from the data set package. And then you could also create a word cloud. Okay, and there are several others. And then there are widgets like buttons, tables, slider, input slider, okay, downloading files, uploading files, subsetting data set and all that. Okay, so there are several examples on how you can develop custom shiny web apps. So why don't we click on one, the first one. Okay, so this map is interactive. If you click on it, we can zoom in. Right, so you click on the color and then it will update the map based on your input. Or also Data Explorer, so it's an interactive table. You can also sort the data as well, okay? Or how about a word cloud generator? Okay, and then you could play around with the input parameters, the minimum frequency of each word. For example, if it's 25, it means that the current word, like love has to be present at least 25 times or 26 times in order for it to be counted here how many words are we limiting to be displayed here okay and these accept input from the books of our choice a midsummer's night dream the merchant of venice or romeo and juliet and we have to click on the change button okay
k-mean clustering using the iris data set, right? Okay. Okay, and then the next one is to have a look at some of the web applications coming out of my own research lab. So let's have a look. Let's go to codes.bio slash OSFP. So as I'm a bioinformatics researcher and data scientist, so what we do in our lab is we try to apply machine learning in order to make sense of biological data and chemical data as well. And so the objective of this web server is to take as input the protein sequence, and then we will predict whether the protein sequence is an oligomer or a monomer. Okay, so let's click on the insert example data, and then the input will be a fast A format of the protein sequence. So the first line, which contains the greater than symbol, followed by the name of the protein is given here. So we see that the first protein is a monomer, and the second protein is a tetramer and let's click on the submit button to make the prediction okay so we see that the prediction is correct on both occasion because the first one is a monomer and it predicts it to be a monomer and the second one is a tetramer and it predicts it to be an oligomer Okay, so this is the interface of the prediction web server. And if you click on the other buttons, it will look like any other ordinary website. Okay, so these are description on how to use the web server. And they are written in Markdown. Okay, so this shiny app can also embed Markdown inside as well. Okay, so we also provide the data set for download as well. And we host it on the GitHub. And if you're interested in reading this paper, you can click on the link. Okay, so this is the paper that we published back in 2016 in the Journal of Chem Informatics. Okay, so let's go back to the slide and let's get started with creating our own web app using Shiny. So what you want to do now is fire up your RStudio or rstudio.cloud. Okay. And so the code that will be used today is available on the Data Professor GitHub. So if you go to github.com slash data professor, okay, and then you click on code and then find shiny slash 001 first app. And then you want to click on app.r. And then you want to right click on the raw button right here. And then you want to click on the save link as and then select a suitable position where you want to save the file and because I already have it I will just click on cancel but if you don't have it yet click on the save button okay so let's open up the app.r file right inside the R Studio. Okay, so before we begin, a credit to Winston Chang for developing this template by which we greatly modified and simplified to make this app.r file. Okay, so if you want to check out the full version, go ahead here. Links are provided here. Okay, so in this simplification, we're going to start with the baby steps. So this web app is an interactive web application whereby it will accept input values in the form of text, primarily the given name and surname. So let's have a look. Okay, so the app will accept input, which is the given name and the surname. Okay, so let's go ahead and type the given name, John, and then surname is Doe. Okay, and so the name John Doe will appear in the output here. And the name of the app is my first app. You can also modify this to your own liking. Okay, and in this example, we have three navigation bar. And so we intentionally left it blank here according to the original template by Winston Chang. Okay, so the code that we have is located on the navbar.1. So a point in note is that you can also create several web apps inside different navigation bar. Let's say that you want to modify the name, like let's say given name is Jennifer. So then you see that the name is automatically updated. So notice that there is no submit button and whenever you type an updated name, it will automatically update the results. So in R, they implement reactive. Let's have a look. Shiny reactive. Reactive expressions. Reactivity and overview. Okay, so it's based on the principles of reactive programming, which is used by the Shiny package. Okay, so we're not going to go into detail, but if you're interested, I can also provide the links in the file as well. Concepts about reactive programming used by Shiny. 
Okay, so I'm going to provide the link for you here. Okay, so a moment ago, we have taken a look at how the web application will look like, which is the end outcome of this code. And so let's look under the hood. What does the code looks like? Okay, so in the slides, I've shown to you that it comprises of three components. So let's have a look. So the first component is the UI. It's right here. So it's on line 19 until lines 43. Okay, lines 19 until lines 43. This is the UI or the user interface. And then on lines 47 until 52 is the server component. So you're gonna notice that we're not doing anything much here. We're just displaying the results. And so the code is very concise. And the third component is the shiny app function. So this thing will piece together the UI and the server. So it's essentially just saying that, okay, this part here is the UI, this part here is the server, and fuse them both to create a shiny app object. Okay, so that's all there is to it at the conceptual level. So let's have a look at the components inside the UI object. Okay, so here it's using inside the fluid page tag, it's using the theme argument and it's telling that we want to use the cerulean theme. Okay, and the cerulean theme is the blue theme that you've seen a moment ago. Let's say that I want to change it to united and I can click on the reload. Oh, I need to save it first and then I'll click on the reload and then it changes to the united. Okay, and I want to change to let's say Yeti save it and then it becomes the yeti theme so maybe you're wondering what's the available options for you so if you search for shiny themes in google okay the first results and just click on it so here this is how a cerulean looks like if you like that and you could type in cerulean it, there's cosmo cyborg darkly paper lumen journal flatly readable Sandstone, Simplex, Slate, Space Lab, Superhero, United, and Yeti. Let's try Superhero. Okay, so it's... John Doe, okay. There you go. Okay, but I just default back to Cerulean. So let's envisage the code as modular components. So you're gonna see that inside the UI, you're going to have a fluid page, okay? And within this fluid page, you're gonna define the theme. And inside the fluid page, aside from the theme, you're gonna have a navigation bar page, right? So the navigation bar page is right here, it's this bar. And so the name of the app is my first app, so this is the name of the navigation bar page. Inside the nav bar page, there is the tab panel, okay? So the tab panel comprises of nav bar one, nav bar two, nav bar three. Okay, and inside nav bar one, you have the sidebar panel right here to the left, right? You have here sidebar panel and your sidebar panel contains tag h3. h3 is the heading, third level heading input, and then text input is the given name, and the text input is the type of input. So if you change this to something else, it will look differently here. And there are a lot of widgets, okay? So you can find what you want. You can shop for what widget you like, and then just replace it right here in the code, okay? So the given name is right here, displayed here. And then this thing here is the default value. So this say that I could type in John Doe and let's save it and reload the app. So you see that John Doe will automatically by default appear in the text box. Okay, but I can also leave it blank as well, right? So this is the contents of the sidebar panel. So the sidebar panel will accept the input, right? And then the main panel is right here where we see header one, output one, John Doe, which is the result. So in main panel one, right? Header one is inside the H1. So H1 is a tag, which is the biggest tag available. And H4 is a smaller tag, right? So we have in order of from big to small, we have H1 and then H2, H3, H4, right? So for the input here, we use H3. If we change it to H1, it will be bigger. It'll be the same size as the header one here, but it's too big. So I'm going to change it to just H3. 
We can even make this H3 as well. Right, so it got a little bit bigger for the output one here. Right, so you can play around with changing the options here. Okay, and so verbatim text output is simply a text box that will return the output value. So it's just a simple text box. And then the navbar 2, navbar 3, as we have previously mentioned, it is intentionally left blank. Okay, so there's that's all there is to the UI. But the confusing part is how does UI and server interact? How do they send information back and forth, right? How does UI send the input value to the server? And how does the server accept the input value? Okay, let's have a look right here. So notice that the text box has this thing called text1, txt1, right, in the given name. Okay, and the surname is txt2. Okay, notice that. Make a note of that. How about I put it in the comments? txt1 and txt2. Okay, and make a note of this too. txt out, txt out. Okay, so these two will be sent to, to the server. TXT2 will also be sent to the server. TXT out is generated from the server. Okay, so let's go back to the slides. Okay, why don't I create a new slide? So let's duplicate the slide. So let's call this the first web app, and we're going to modify this to reflect the contents of this web app. Okay, so the input data is txt1 and txt2, right? And the output is txt out, right? So it will send txt1 and txt2 to the server. And so actually the server sends, right, txt out. And then txt out will be displayed, displays txt out. So here, txt1 and txt2 will be sent to the server txt1 and txt2 here as input dollar sign txt1 and input dollar sign txt2. Okay, and so the question is how does it send it as the txt out? It's right here. Output dollar sign txt out. And it's going to use this function called render text. Okay, so there's several render function like render table, render text, right, that you can modify. So you can also find out from the shiny documentation. Okay, so this output txt out, what it essentially does is it will use the paste function to combine txt1 and txt2 and separate it by a empty space and then it will produce the result as the concatenated text of txt1 and txt2 inside the txt out variable and then this variable will be called from within the verbatim text output and then it will display the text inside the text box that's all there is to this shiny web application it will seem a bit confusing, but if you get the concepts straight, it will be very simple. And then you could create any web application to your own imagination. Okay, you can make this web application data driven. You could as input, you could upload a file of the input data, and then the input data will be sent to the server, right? And then in the server, you could create a machine learning model. And then once the machine learning model is built, it would then relay the results back into the UI, and then the UI will display the predicted results. Okay, so this will be very powerful as a model deployment approach for your machine learning model. Okay, and there's several tips and tricks which we used in our research lab, and we can share this in a future video. And so if you're finding value out of this video, please smash the like button. Okay, so let me recap this process. In summary, this app.r file will contain three components. The UI component, which is the user interface. It will accept input, which is the txt1 and txt2, which corresponds to the given name and the surname. And when you input the given name and surname, it will be sent to the server. And then the paste function will combine txt1 and txt2 and put it inside a txt out variable. And then this txt out variable is embedded inside the verbatim text output, which is a text box on the UI. 
And as a result, you will see the input values that you typed in displayed in the text box. Okay, so this is a first web app, which is essentially starting from the basics. So nothing fancy here, just a simple web app where you could type in the name, the first name, last name, and then it will display the result. Okay, so in future videos of this series called the web app in R, we're going to have several other videos. And if you have ideas on what application you would like us to develop, let us know. So please comment down below and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.